Hello and welcome to the Timeshare Rental Strategies channel. I'm Sue Oyuela and in this video we're going to go over how you can get more enjoyment out of your timeshare by understanding the rules that matter most so you can use it more and reduce the risk of letting your points go to waste when renting your timeshare. I'm posting weekly videos here so be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates. Now, I believe that a timeshare is an investment because, like real estate, it can generate rental income. However, renting timeshares is drastically different from renting regular long-term rentals, and even if you're familiar with short-term rentals, timeshares are a completely different animal. Because the timeshare's rules are so confusing, the trick is to learn how to understand those rules so you could set up your custom timeshare rental system that will produce a steady income for you year after year. Now in order to do that, there are actually four phases to setting up a timeshare rental system. One, understanding your timeshare's rules from a risk management standpoint. Two, pricing, how to price your timeshare rental right. Three, creating a high converting listing. And four, automating and scaling your timeshare rental system so it takes just minutes to manage each year. So in this video we'll be going over phase one, understanding your timeshare's rules. So let's talk about that. What are the risks? So now if you're like me, I do not have a high tolerance for risk. So I always look at renting a timeshare in terms of limiting my risk. And be aware that with timeshares, just like any investment, there are risks of loss. So with timeshares, what can be lost? Well, first of all, your points can go to waste if they're not used and they're not rolled over, right? Points can expire. So we need to manage the time frames for using them so we don't lose them. Number two, if you make a reservation but your plans change and you can't find someone to go in your place, well, you can lose the points you have invested in the reservation. Number three, similarly, if you make a reservation for someone else to use your timeshare and they cancel, you can lose those points as well. And of course, number four, you can lose any cash that you may have invested in the reservation, such as cancellation protection fees, guest certificate fees, exchange fees, you know, any kind of fees. Okay, so how can we protect from loss? So now that we know what to watch out for, all we have to do is put a plan in place to manage the risks so we can either avoid or mitigate the losses. So when it comes to understanding the timeshares rules, you have to become a sort of translator, understanding what their rules and terms are, what they mean, and what the implications of those rules are. So if we want to protect ourselves from the risk of losing our points, we need to find out when our points expire and what our options are if we reach that expiration date. So some timeshares will let you roll the points over to the next year for free or for a fee. But there is usually a limit to how often you can do that, so you will have to use them or lose them eventually, right? So I recommend putting a reminder on your calendar and putting a plan in place for what you will do if you're at risk of losing your points. You have five options. Let's go over them now. Plan A. Plan to take a vacation and use them yourself. Plan B, if you can't use them, give them to a friend or family member to use so that they don't go to waste. Okay, plan C, if none of your immediate friends or family members can use them, find someone on the internet who can. Okay, here's plan D, deposit those points to an exchange like RCI or Interval to extend their expiration date. And finally, plan E, let them expire worthless. That doesn't sound ideal, but as long as that's your plan, then you can have peace and not regret your decision because you did it intentionally. Does that make sense? Okay. And of course, it's always good to have multiple backup plans, so if one doesn't work out, you'll know which plan to try next. So put in the comments below which plan or plans you're going to implement, either A, B, C, D, or E, and let me know why you've chosen to do it that way. Great. So now let's talk about the risk of canceling a reservation, either if it's for you or for a guest. So what's at risk if a reservation is canceled? Well, the points or weeks that were used for that reservation may be lost, depending on the date it is canceled. Okay, so that's the key. So how do you know when that is? Well, it's pretty straightforward actually. 
the timeshare will state very clearly when you're making the reservation what their cancellation policy is. And there are three things I want you to watch out for. Number one, what is the last day you can cancel without penalty? Okay. Number two, will there be a penalty? And if so, how much? And number three, can you avoid that penalty by purchasing a cancellation protection insurance of some kind? Okay, so I want you to keep something in mind. The timeshare makes up these rules and we have to play within them. And even if they seem unreasonable, don't worry. It's still not a deal breaker. We can create a strategy to navigate around them to shift the odds in our favor. Okay, so here are three things you can do to mitigate the loss based on a cancellation scenario. Number one, if you can cancel within a few days of check-in and get your points back, just simply set a reminder on your calendar. And you know then, after that date, you know that you'll either have to use the reservation by that date or lose it. Fair enough? Okay, good. Or what you can do is, if you have to pay a penalty fee if you cancel, then just do the math to see what the value of your points is worth that you've used for that reservation. And if the points are worth more than the fees that they're charging you, then it will definitely be worth it to pay the penalty so that you can use your points in the future. Okay, but number three, what can happen is, if the timeshare has what I call an unreasonable cancellation policy that, for example, only lets you cancel the reservation, you know, 24 hours after you make it, otherwise you'll lose your points, then I would look for the option to purchase some sort of cancellation protection insurance that extends that deadline into a reasonable time frame. And what I mean by reasonable is that everybody knows that when you're traveling, plans can change. And you probably won't know that you won't be able to go on your trip until it's within, you know, a day or two of your departure date. So by purchasing the cancellation protection insurance to extend the cancellation date to within, you know, 72 hours or less from the day of check-in, then you'll reduce your risk of losing the points you have invested in that reservation. And you'll be able to get your points back if your plan should change at the last minute. Easy peasy. Okay. So, if you've been frustrated with your timeshare because you're paying for something you're not even using, now you know how to reduce the risk of your points going to waste so that you can use them later on. And if you've been worried about renting your timeshare to someone who might end up canceling at the last minute, now you know how you can get your points back simply by following the timeshare's cancellation policy. So by managing your timeshare like an investment and using these risk management strategies, I hope you're going to get much more enjoyment and value out of it. And if you'd like to speak to a timeshare rental expert about your unique situation, click the link in the show notes below to schedule a free 30-minute discovery call with me or a member of my team. Thanks for watching. This is Sue Oyuela wishing you all the best and timeshare rental success. Bye for now.